Welcome back folks. It's time to jump into the subject of twist rate, barrel twist in the 224 Valkyrie. This is a hotly debated topic right now. When Federal released the 224 Valkyrie, they recommended a one in seven twist. So that's what the majority of the barrels and uppers out there are. But some folks have been struggling with the cartridge and the one in seven twist barrels have been getting a lot of the blame. So one in 6.5 twist barrels have started to hit the market. Well, my history with the 224 Valkyrie is a little bit rocky. I started off with an 18 inch one in seven twist barrel from White Oak Armament they sent to me to test with, and I couldn't get it to shoot light bullets or heavy bullets. So I packaged it up and sent it back to them and they confirmed that the barrel was just bad. They had received a couple bad blanks and I just happened to get lucky enough to get one. So they sent me back a similar replacement. It's an 18 inch one in seven twist barrel, but they've also loaned me a complete upper. It is a 20 inch one in 6.5 twist. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to test a whole bunch of different heavy bullets side by side in one in seven and one in 6.5 twist and just see what we can figure out. I've got a bit of a mess on my hands here. I've shot over 400 rounds. I've got over 10 hours of range footage. I've got 68 groups to show you. So I've got to try and condense this down into a video of reasonable length. It may end up just being a mess. I guess I could start with a quick look at the uppers. This is the seven twist upper. This is an 18 inch barrel, like I mentioned. It does have a rifle length gas system. Now this should represent the very worst case scenario. This is a short barrel. So we're gonna be lagging in velocity. You know, keeping that velocity up is important in stabilizing bullets. It's in a BCM upper receiver and a BCM handguard, and it's got a 24 power vortex scope. The other upper is a complete upper from White Oak. I believe this is what they call one of their varmint uppers. And you'll notice the barrels stamped WOP for White Oak Precision. From what I understand, White Oak Precision is their complete uppers, and then White Oak Armament is the parts side of the business. And this guy also has a 24 power vortex scope on it. So this is the lower I used for all of these. It's a Magpul PRS stock. It's got a LaRue MBT trigger and the magazine. The magazine is an AR stoner, which you can get over at Midway USA. These are about 14 bucks. It's been a good performing magazine so far. Function issues really haven't been a problem in the Valkyrie. And one great thing about the AR Stoner magazines is they allow a max overall length of just over 2.3 inches. So for the test ammo I've been loading, for magazine length stuff, I've been using 2.3 inches as my standard cartridge overall length. Your factory ammo will be limited to 2.260 because there's some magazines that are a bit shorter. So I'm liking the AR Stoner magazine so far. So here's a lineup of the six heavy bullets that are on the market that I know of. The shortest guy on the left is the 90 grain Federal Fusion. That's the bullet they use in this stuff, this Federal Fusion factory ammunition. It's That bullet's not available to us for hand loading right now, but it's the shortest one of the bunch. Now I've always heard that bullet length is a big deal when it comes to how hard they are to stabilize. So the short little 90 grain fusion you'd think wouldn't be a problem. Now just to its right is the 90 grain Sierra Match King. This bullet seems awfully short. Like I didn't realize how short it was until I lined it up with these others. This is the bullet this whole cartridge is designed around. It's what Federal uses in this stuff. In their gold, gold metal Sierra Match King factory ammo, that's the 90 grain Sierra Match King. So that's that guy. Next to it is the 90 grain Burger VLD target. It's a pretty big jump in length there between the Match King and the Burger. Now next to it, this is our only tipped option. This is the 88 grain Hornady ELD match. Hornady has started loading up some factory ammunition with this bullet. Here it is right here. 224 Valkyrie, 88 grain ELD match. We're gonna shoot some of this stuff today. We're gonna to shoot all of the different factory ammos today, along with a bunch of hand loads. But that guy's pretty long, right? It's a couple grains lighter at 88 grains rather than 90, but it's a long one. Now, next to it is the 90 grain JLK. This bullet isn't even on the market anymore. The guys at White Oak had some of these laying around and they're like 20 years old from back in the 90s, but they sent some along for me to test with. And the bullet on the right is the 95 grain Sierra Match King. I think this bullet just came out earlier this year. You can see right on the bullet packaging, it says 6.5 twist or faster. So common sense says that this would be a huge challenge for our one in seven twist barrel and probably isn't going to work. And in one of my previous videos, I decided to run a poll and see what the audience thought. Can the 18 inch one in seven barrel stabilize the 95 grain Sierra Match King? 
48% said no, 27% said yes, and 24% said maybe. So Sierra says it shouldn't work. The audience says it's not gonna work, but we're gonna test it and find out today. Now the box for the 90 grain bullets also says 6.5 twist or faster. And I think this has caused a whole lot of confusion. And Sierra updated their load data sheet to say that it's 6.5 twist if you're shooting less than 2600 feet per second but a 7 twist can work if it's over 2600 feet per second now 2600 feet per second is not ridiculously fast for the for the valkyrie we can get there if we look at the 90 grain match king factory ammo the box says 2700 feet per second is what it should run out of a 24 inch barrel now we're six inches shorter than that at an 18 inch barrel. So we're not gonna be able to hit 2600 unless we're shooting at or very near maximum loads. The readings on my chronograph with this stuff were 2647 feet per second from our new 18 incher. So we're supposed to be okay, but we don't have a whole lot of uh, margin for error there, it doesn't seem. So one more quick thing before we start shooting. I think it's important to define what's good and what's bad because these barrels are new to me. I haven't done any load development. All I did was load them up with a bunch of different powders at max charges. I loaded up a couple that were lower to check pressure, but it was basically just pedal to the metal, max charges. I used the Sierra load data and the Hodgton load data. Hodgton just released some, uh, some good load data with some interesting powders. So just purely group size, isn't really much of an indication of whether the bullets are stable or not. It, they may just be crappy loads. I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. Not everything we shoot today is going to be stable. And I wanna show you these bullet holes. The targets I use are a stiff poster board. And when a bullet is flying a little bit wonky, it's generally very easy to see that the grease mark around the bullet hole is not perfectly circular. You can tell the bullet went through a little bit sideways. That's what we're looking for. So nice round bullet holes, but a crappy group is still good. A small group where they all fl fly through the paper sideways is bad. So let's just, let's jump right into it and let's just go straight to the most difficult one. Let's go to the 95 grain Sierra Match King. This is the first thing I wanna show you. So the powder for the test with the 95 grain Sierra Match King is gonna be H414. H414 and Winchester 760 are the same powder. The Hodgton website has H414 data. On the Sierra data, they show Winchester 760. So what I'm shooting is the max charge from the Sierra data. We're gonna do it at a 2.3 inch overall length. We're gonna mag magazine feed them and our velocity with the 18 inch barrel the one in seven twist barrel is going to be 2611 feet per second now i'm hoping this shooting won't be too hard to follow because i'm going to show both groups at the same time the screen's going to be a little bit busy but we've got too many groups to cover to do them one at a time so here we go let's get out there and see if the 95 grain match king flies All right, I don't know if you have an explanation for this, but I certainly don't. The seven twist barrel shoots awesome with the 95 grain Sierra Match King. The group was actually tighter than the 6.5 twist barrel, not by much. And the 6.5 the 6 twist barrel did have a flyer, but now you might notice I was shooting with my suppressor. This is our universal accurizer around here. Every time we screw the suppressor on a gun, it shoots tighter groups. So later on, I'm gonna be showing you some stuff when without the suppressor, and the groups aren't quite as tight, but I thought I'd mention that. That's why you see the suppressor on there. My first time through testing all of these, I didn't have this on because I didn't want to get a baffle strike. So after I saw that the 95 grain Sierra Match King shot awesome with H414 at a little bit over 2,600 feet per second, I thought, huh, I wonder, I wonder how it would shoot with a grandma load, right? A nice low velocity load, a starting charge. So I went back to the Sierra load data and picked out one of the starting charges. We went to a faster burning powder in H4895, 21 grains of H4895. Now the velocity on these 
with the 18 inch barrel, 2338 feet per second. So do you think there's any chance that a 95 grain Sierra Match King will stabilize from a one in seven twist at 2338 feet per second? Well, let's go find out. Is your mind blown? Because my mind is blown, man. Now the group opened up a 1.485 inch group versus a 0.765 inch group with the 6.5 twist, but the bullet holes look perfect. They're nice and round. I think it's just a crappy group. I think a little bit of, you know, load development. If I wanted to shoot grandma loads, a little charge weight or overall length tweak, and I bet it would be shooting just as good as the 6.5 twist. So if our longest, heaviest bullet is stabilizing just fine, you might be wondering, well, where did those pictures of those weird looking bullet holes come from? Well, not everything stabilized. And I'll go ahead and show you the worst one. We'll just look at the target. There's no reason to show you all the range footage from this. The 90 grain JLK. Please keep in mind that this bullet is not even on the market anymore. So you couldn't even buy them if you wanted, but they flew all sorts of sideways. You can see here, I shot four different loads with these. I shot Hodgton Superformance at a short overall length and a long overall length. And then I shot H414 and Reloader 17. The 6.5 twist groups aren't bad. You know, that one at 0.732 inches is pretty nice. And keep in mind, this was without the suppressor. So these might've been a little tighter shooting through the suppressor, but yeah, with the seven twist, it was, it was all bad, man. All four of the groups had bullet holes that were wonky looking and several of them were just spraying all over the place. Now this was not the last bad bullet of the day. There's one more that caused some problems. So let's keep on trucking here. I wanna move on next to the 90 grain Sierra Match King. And just like the 95 grain Match King, I've got a fast load and I've got a slow load. The fast load is, it's nothing crazy high velocity. It's actually 2,580 feet per second with Hodgton H4350 and my camera won't focus. There, there it is, yeah. Hodgton H4350. Some of the other test loads, uh, H414 in particular. Yeah, H414 was 2,670 feet per second. And back here, Reloader 17 was 2,690. But the groups, which we'll actually, we'll look at the target later, but the group with H4350 was the best. That's what I loaded up for my verification loads to shoot with the suppressor. So let's get out there. We'll do high velocity with 4350 and low velocity with H4895 once again. So let's do it.
So once again, we get a surprising result. The one in seven twist barrel actually shot better at the lower velocity. Listen, a 10 shot group at 0.825 inches is not easy to pull off. Like these, both of these bullets, the 95 and the 90, both of these uppers are really shooting them well. I can't wait to dive in and tweak these loads and find out the loads they really like because these just random max charges are really impressing me. So there's one more kind of verification load that I wanna show you, and it is with the 88 grain ELD match. These guys right here. I only loaded a, uh, a high velocity test with these guys with H414 again. Velocity on these was a little bit higher, 2719 feet per second with the 18 inch barrel, 2765 with the 6.5, with the 6.5 twist barrel, the 20 incher. I don't know if you've noticed or not, there's not a huge spread in velocity between you know the two inches of extra barrel. I think the four groups I've shown you so far, the most velocity differential we've seen between the two was 16 feet per second, I think. Now this load, it's actually 46 feet per second difference, but that's about as high as I've seen. I've seen a whole lot of 20, 30 feet per second differentials. So the two inch shorter barrel doesn't seem to be costing us a whole lot. So let's get out and look at the 88 ELD group. So I need to make an excuse here about the 88 grain Hornady ELD match groups. We're going to look at a few more of the 88 grain groups later on, and they're actually better than this one I just shot. Both of these groups, like we had seven or eight of them that were packed in nice and tight, and then we caught some crazy flyers. And what I'm blaming it on right now are my bullet seating dies. I've been chasing my tail with bullet seating so far in this cartridge. I started out with a basic RCBS seating die and it was marking up the bullets really bad. So I ordered a set of Forster dies. This is the Forster Benchrest Cedar die. And we screwed up a seating stem. This is all covered in the earlier videos on the Valkyrie. I screwed up a seating stem, trying to get it to fit better. And then I ordered a replacement. Well, in the course of making this video, I broke that seating stem. I cracked it because that's one thing you should be warned about if you're getting into reloading for 224 Valkyrie, holy crap, a lot of these charges are extremely compressed. You'll notice, I mean, these are slow powders, H4350, H414, Hodgson Superformance, Reloader 17, like these are, these are slow powders for a cartridge this size, and these big charge weights, um, pretty much everything is compressed. Well, after I broke the seating stem in this guy, what I decided to do was buy a 22 caliber Hornady seating die. Yep, one of these guys. I've had really good luck with this style of die in 6.5 millimeter. And the way their seating dies are, they're, they're universal by caliber. So I can use this guy in 223, which I've been needing to kind of upgrade my seating die for it and all of that stuff. So I just, they're 20 something bucks. I went, decided to go ahead and get one. And they do offer a special seating stem for the 75 and 80 grain ELD match. It's not quite a perfect fit with the 88. The Forster actually fit the 88 better than, than the Hornady does. So I'm hoping that Hornady will release a seating stem for the 88 grain ELD, but they haven't yet. And if they don't do it soon, maybe I'll get one of these and try and modify it or something to fit better. But I, I think that might have been the cause of some of my flyers here in those last two groups we just looked at. I wasn't totally happy with the way those ELDs were seating. But overall, I mean, we're looking good. The 90 grain Sierra Match King, the 95 grain Sierra Match King, and the 88 grain ELD all seem to be performing excellent in both barrels. Okay, so next let's jump over to some factory ammo. I wanna go shoot the two 90 grain options. The 90 grain Federal Gold Medal Sierra Match King. This is a very early lot number. These are what I bought when I was first building my gun, like, as soon as they hit the market, I bought these. Now there are rumors that the early lot numbers were awful 
And like actually right now you can't find it in stock anywhere, or at least you couldn't a week or two ago. It seems like they may have been trying to clear inventory and kind of uh, start over due to all of the people complaining. So my expectations are not very high with the 90 grain Sierra Match King. The other is the 90 grain Federal Fusion. If you remember the bullet in this guy was our shortest little guy. So let's, get, let's go out and hit these two uh, five shot groups with each. Okay, first of all, holy crap, those groups with the 90 grain Sierra Match King were awesome. A .855 with the 6.5 twist and a .626 with the seven twist. Like, man, this ammo is supposed to be junk. So I don't understand what the heck's going on. But unfortunately, our shortest bullet has decided to cause us problems. The seven twist barrel did not stabilize these guys. This was a shock and it wasn't even close. It wasn't like, you know, four of them grouped and one of them decided to fly sideways. Like they were all going wild. So I actually ordered another box of this stuff because, well, I had pulled one bullet out to get that picture at the beginning of this video. So I only had nine rounds of this stuff. I did four rounds in the 6.5 twist, you might've noticed, and then five in the seven twist. I went ahead and ordered another box because I wanted to kind of verify this again. But the more I've thought about it since, like, okay, what if, even if the new box shows up and shoots okay or stabilizes, I'm still not going to feel confident in this round anymore, right? In the 18 inch barrel. So that's really unfortunate. I'm, I'm pretty bummed out that we had problems stabilizing the fusion. I was not expecting that. And I haven't seen that reported by others. So if you've also had problems stabilizing the fusion, let me know in the comments, but it is what it is. All right, so let's move on. Let's go ahead and finish up the last three factory ammo. First is gonna be the 88 grain ELD match. I had a full box of this stuff, so we shot a 10 shot group for each gun. And then we'll move on to the 75 grain American Eagle total metal jacket, kind of their plinking ammo. And then finish up with the 60 grain nozzle ballistic tip. So let's go out and shoot those three.
Okay, so I must admit that's some pretty underwhelming performance from the factory ammo. But I mean, you know, if I wasn't used to underwhelming factory ammo, I probably wouldn't have a YouTube channel dedicated to reloading, now would I? None of it was like truly awful. Just, you know, just not awesome. Except for those 90 grain Sierra Match King groups. I mean, those were pretty awesome. But I was hoping for maybe a little bit better out of the, the 88 grain ELD Hornady stuff. But I'd love to reshoot these with the suppressor on. And we probably will eventually, but not for today's video. The most important thing for today's video is those three stabilized, right? So everything's stabilized except the Fusion and the 90 grain JLK. So I think that's enough shooting. This video is probably getting ridiculously long. So let's just run through some targets. Maybe there will be some information on these you might uh, find interesting. First is the 90 grain Sierra Match King. These were my initial test targets where I shot without the suppressor, the 20 inch gun. I had a Silencer Co. flash hider on it and it seemed to shoot reasonably well with that. And the 18 inch gun, I had the Harrell's Precision Tuner Brake but I didn't really do any tuning with it, right? I just had the weights all the way forward. It seemed to be shooting halfway decent in that configuration, so that's what I went with. So looking back to our barrel harmonics videos, our barrel tuning videos, I'm sure both of these could do with a little bit of a uh, little bit of tuning, but no time for that yet. It's all about stabilization. All right, uh, all right, 90 grain Sierra Match King. Actually, I shot six powders. Superformance H414, H4350, IMR 4350, Reloader 17 and Reloader and uh, IMR 4451. I was surprised by Hodgton Superformance, not only on this target, but on several of the others we're about to look, look at. It shot pretty well, but I kind of ran out. I need to pick up another can. So Superformance and H414 have been pleasant surprises so far. But here on this one, the seven twist barrel really didn't care for H414 with the, with the 90 grain Sierra Match King. The only powder that both barrels really didn't care for was Reloader 17. So that's the fifth group on the top and the bottom. Both groups were over two inches and the seven twist was over two and a half inches. I looked at these bullet holes closely. It was not like goofy looking bullet holes. They were flying stable. It was just shooting crappy groups. But like I mentioned, Reloader 17 in particular is extremely compressed. I was using my Forster bullet seating die and it had a cracked seating stem at the time. So things got a little bit wonky with bullet seating, which may be a contributing factor with some of this stuff. So, so that was the 90 grain Sierra Match King. Moving on to the 95 grain, this was the one bullet that Reloader 17 seemed to work well with, all the way on the far right, the 0 0.860 on the top and a 1.2 inch group on the bottom. I shot multiple overall lengths here. Like the very first group where it says super short, that means super performance, with the short overall length of 2.3 inches magazine length. And I also shot them long. Yeah, 2.327 was the long overall length I shot. And then I shot H4350 at a short and long overall length and then shot H414 and Reloader 17, both at the short one. So the earlier groups I showed you with the 95 were much better than these once we put the suppressor on. But the important part with these, everything was flying stable and no questions about bullet flight. So moving on to the Hornady ELD match. I did four groups, uh, you know, Hodgson Superformance at a short and long overall length. The long length for the ELD was 2.322. I tried to do 10 thousandths off the lands. So 2.3 and then some longer number that was two, 10 thousandths off the lands. The good thing about the 90 grain Sierra Match King in these white oak barrels, 2.3 inches is 10 thousandths off the lands. That's why I didn't do a a short and a long group with those because mag length was already putting us just about right where we needed to be. Now there are a bunch of good groups here. Top row, third one, 0.388 inches with Hodgton H414. That was really good shooting. The Superformance groups were great. Then down with the seven twist, it seemed to like the long overall length with Superformance. Really shot well. No questions about stability. It all looked great. Now the last target, is the 90 grain Burger VLD target. These guys just didn't want to shoot in either barrel. The short overall length was 2.3. The long overall length with these guys was 2.366. So that second group was at 2.366. All the others were at 2.3. But except for maybe like the third group on top 
And then the first group on the bottom, those aren't too bad. But I've got some work to do here with the, with the burger. Probably need to screw around with overall length some. Try and find the sweet spot with those guys. We'll get around to these eventually. But to be honest, it might be a while. Because the 90 grain Sierra Match King, the 95 grain Sierra Match King, the 88 grain Hornady ELD, all of those are cheaper options. And they're all shooting extremely well. So the burger's stabilizing but it looks like it might be more of a challenge to find the accuracy with that guy. So that's about it, folks. 68 groups. Whew. Like I mentioned, I apologize if this video is a bit of a mess and hard to follow, but it represents a ton of work. I feel great about both of these barrels. Like I have no doubt that we're gonna see, you know, the sort of accuracy out of these that we see out of my 223 white oak barrel. Now, one thing white oak could mention to me is they've been seeing some really outstanding accuracy with the 82 grain burger and the 80.5 grain burger. So I've got some of those we're gonna try, but I'm extremely pleased here with the heavy bullets. And like this has been a huge boost in confidence just in the cartridge in general. But I think this, this twist discussion has got a lot of merit because I think, you know, at least here in this video, we got some confusing results, right? Like I, the, that 18 inch barrel was not supposed to Stabilize the 95. I don't know why it does. I don't understand. I don't know enough about the subject to understand why it's working. But we know from what we saw with the JLK, which is not a big deal, but the Fusion, that was that's kind of a big deal. Like the 90 grain Fusion worries me. Now, if you had a 20 inch or a 22 inch or a 24 inch one in seven, maybe you're fine. Like I mentioned, this is the absolute worst case scenario. A short barrel with the slow twist. Now, hopefully you saw the, the video over on Iraq Veteran 8888 a couple weeks back. I think it was called like, what's the deal with 224 Valkyrie? Now he was shooting a 24 inch 6.5 twist barrel. And right there on camera, he had a couple instances where the 90 grain Sierra Match King was separating and coming apart. I believe he was shooting a, a very hot load with Power Pro 2000 MR. And it was a particularly hot day. And like, I think his, his velocities really got up there and the bullets started coming apart. And as I did more research, I found that a lot of the, the FTR shooters who shoot the big, long 30 inch barrels in, uh, in 223. And with, they shoot big, long 30 inch barrels and they shoot long throats so that they can shoot these big, heavy bullets and seed them way out. So with those 30 inch barrels, they get these sort of velocities out of these bullets from 223. And when the 90 grain Sierra Match King was released a few years ago, that was the problem they were running into. The bullets were separating and never making it to the target. Now Sierra had supposedly fixed the problem and I think it got better, but seeing what happened over there on Iraq Veteran 8888, kind of that defines the, the failure at the upper limit. You go too fast with your twist and your bullets are gonna come apart. And then today what I saw with my one in seven twist barrel, if you go too slow and you're shooting a short barrel, then you're not gonna stabilize them. So there's very little reliable information and everybody just seems to be making wild ass guesses. So maybe I'll just, I'll do the same. I'm wondering if maybe, okay, 18 or 20 inch barrels, a one in 6.5 twist would be better because just due to the barrel length restriction on velocity, you're never gonna get the velocities high enough to, to tear apart these bullets. But if you're shooting a 22 or a 24 inch barrel or a 26 inch barrel, maybe a one in seven will be just fine because you've got that extra velocity. I don't know. So beyond the subject of twist rate, here's my biggest problem so far with the Valkyrie. This is my collection of bad brass. I was just pitching them in the trash, but then I started thinking, well, maybe I should keep track of how many are going bad. The primer pockets on hot loads are getting wiped out in one firing, two at the most. And especially like factory ammo that's loaded hot, even once fired, the primer pockets are totally loose. Now, if you just think I'm nitpicking, here's a, here's a piece of bad brass. You shouldn't be able to do that. Just push a primer in with your, with your finger. Here's one that's particularly bad. I've got a 
decapping pin in here so I can push it out of there. <laughs> like just zero resistance. Just back and forth. Just totally and completely wiped out. And there's plenty of the star line in here as well. I bought 250 pieces of star line and they're not, they don't seem to be any better than the federal with the hot loads. But the good news though is a lot of them are holding up. So I think it's just the very hot loads that are doing it and we can maybe back off just a touch and they might be okay. I don't know. We'll, we'll see as it goes. But with Starline Brass being like 40 cents a piece, if I can only get one or two firings out of them, I'm not going to be loading this cartridge very long. I'm actually surprised at how cheap the Federal Brass is. I think it's going for like 23, 25 cents a piece or something like that. And I'm wondering if that's why. Like they know that the primer pockets are going to be a big problem with this cartridge. So they're making the brass affordable. So hopefully it doesn't bug people quite as bad as it might otherwise. I'm not sure. The 20 pieces from this box of uh, Hornady Match, that's the first Hornady brass I've seen, which they've got crimped primer pockets. That was a shock. Might need to wait till the next video to show you, but they're kind of staked. There's four stakes around the primer. You can see this stuff. You can see a little bit of pressure signs here. So this stuff's loaded hot, and if they've had to stake these primers to keep them in place, it won't surprise me to find that, that they're having the same problems. I don't know. We will be exploring that and more as we go forward. So I think that's it for now, folks. The question I'm leaving unanswered is, okay, how does the 6.5 twist barrel do with light bullets? Neither barrel was that impressive with the 60 grain factory ammo, but I'll be loading up some light bullets here soon. I'll make that one of my next videos here. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll throw a couple light bullets at these guys and see how they do. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Maybe it will. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, folks, I think that's where I'll leave it. I'll see you all next time.